Hey, and I think we're live. Are we live? Uh, buh, 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 we are live. Yes. Thank you for rocking with me for this stream. I am going through these broadcasts. These broadcasts. 88 shows. We're, we're up to 87 right now. The 88th will be up on November 25th. Of course, this is my little shindig right here on CKCU, Mystic and Severe. And, you know, CKCUFM.com programs. This is all going to be ancient history. Scroll down to Wednesday, Mystic and Severe. This page will be gone in a matter of weeks. So, this stream stream's purpose is to archive the history of Mystic and Severe on CKCU FM. It's my history. I'm going to be telling you what I accomplished, what I got done, why I think it was a show of, of uh, you know, not just of merit, but of significance. And um, I'm going to be doing three streams like this. So, um, yeah, this is the first one. Is, do, is going to go from May 2018, or no, sorry, uh, August 2018 to May 2019. And then the next one will go from May 2019 until, I actually want to know exactly when, um, until April 2nd, 2020. And then we'll go April 16th to right now, April 16th, 2020 to November 25th, so that'll be uh, quite long. That stream will be quite long. So I'm going to get my uh, toes wet with this one. We're going to go through each broadcast, and I'm just going to read the write-up, and we're going to recollect a little bit. So, my world premiere. This is the first ever Mystic and Severe, and... You might know the show now or subscribe to this YouTube channel and know that I do a lot of interviews. And I would, but the thing was, at this time, I had another show with a co host. And the show was called Movie Mondays. Now, some of those interviews have migrated over to YouTube. Uh, but, you know, most of that content is gone forever. It kind of came and went. Um, so. I was already doing conversations, and I was already, um, you know, doing interviews on that show. So, I just really wanted to DJ. And uh, someone at the station sort of encouraged me to follow this idea of a, uh, of, of, you know, a music, movie soundtrack show. I tried to DJ a little bit. And so, this is, uh, what do we have here? So a lot of this is vinyl, and then a lot of it is also MP3. So let's read the write-up. If you love soundtracks, this is for you. If you never listen to soundtracks, this will hook you in. Welcome to the wonderful world of listening to soundtracks isolated from the film. We start with David Cronenberg's World of Crash, which is truly a haunting score done by Howard Shore. Things then get funky with Giorgio Moroder's soundtrack for the 1982 remake of Cat People, which was directed by Paul Schrader. It gets funkier and modern with newish material by writer, director, composer John Carpenter. We go full circle with Ennio Morricone's thumping yet spooky score for The Thing. <laughs> it's a fun writer. <laughs> I'm not usually that creative these days. Granted, this is a terse write up. It is creative and lively. And, uh, it's kind of funny to go back. You think you, in many ways, you do get better, but it, some things get lost along the way, too. And I wish, I, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see if my other write ups compare to this one, because this one's fun. So, right away, the intro song was by Roberto Donati, uh, but, called NYC Main Title off the Cannibal Ferox soundtrack. Now, on Movie Mondays, this the song was Streets to Blame from the Murder Rock soundtrack by Keith Emerson. And we would not finish that song. We would play like 20 seconds and then go into the show. However, I, you know, since I didn't have to 
negotiate with anyone with this show. It was important to me that we always hear NYC main title for Mystic and Severe. Partially because it's a very long show. And also because I just like that song and I don't like fading in, fading out. I, 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 want, I want to hear the whole song. You know, that was my idea. So if you've been listening to Mystic and Severe on CKCUFM and you tune in, when you, when you hear that first note of NYC main title by Roberto Donati, you know it's on. It's on. Um, yeah. And also, it has significant significance because the first Movie Mondays, not show, but segment on uh, Monday Social Blends was um, a conversation on cannibal movies. Italian cannibal movies. Uh, so I, I kind of wanted to uh, have a shout out to that sort of. Okay, so also you realize the, this Canadian uh, flag right here, is, that's the CanCon. And I was under the impression that I had to do a lot of CanCon for this show. And then we shortly realized that that would not really be possible because there's not that many um, Hollywood film composers from Canada, you know. There's, and there, in the Canadian... Um, film scores, I couldn't really get access to that material. You know, the masters weren't put on a CD or anything like that. So, but I went in on this soundtrack, the Crash soundtrack. I think I played, I played every song on the soundtrack. I, the one I had, actually, I showed this right up to Christopher Young. He said, wow, you played every song off the Crash soundtrack. I said, no, I didn't play the bonus songs. I had the bonus songs too, like a real bonehead. <laughs> But Christopher Young and Scratch, I played every song. So let's see. We got Crash, Sin of the Terror. Some of these um, titles are great. Mechanism of Occupant Injection. Mirror Image. Where's the Car? Sexual Logic. Road Research Laboratory. Mansfield Crash. Chromium Bauer. A Benevolent Psychopathology. There's one that's... A prophecy is, a, is Dirty and Ragged is my favorite. But yeah, two semi metallica human beings, Triton, accident, accident, a crush convertible. Yeah. So, it's a crazy movie. It's a crazy movie. But it's a really good soundtrack. Haunting, melancholic guitar playing right there, electric guitar. I really love that soundtrack. I've only seen the movie once. I really should rewatch it. I was going to, at the Mayfair Theater here in Ottawa, they uh, played... Um, Arrow videos transfer of it, I think. However, I did not make it up that night. So, yeah, that sucks. Okay, now we're going to get to uh, David Bowie and Giorgio Moroder. So, cat, cat people putting out the fire with gasoline. I first heard of that song in, uh, from uh, watching Inglorious Bastards. When Shoshana's getting ready for the big premiere, they play that song while well, she's getting ready. Pretty cool. Uh, and then these other tracks. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I think Leopard Tree Dream is the one that was sampled by LP on the Cannibal Ox album. Uh, okay. And then um, these are the tracks The Autopsy, Irene's Theme, and Night Rabbit. They're very trippy. You know, psychedelic dense disco. That's, that's the name of the game with Giorgio. And I'm a big fan. And also. What was really fun about Miss Skin Severe in 2018 to 2019 is I amassed a lot of vinyl to play for the show. Not even having a record player, I did that. I just kind of wanted to play records for this show. But then the thing is that I bought a lot, and then I, 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 couldn't, uh, I couldn't play it outside of the station. And it was sort of a bar. But the good news is, is I am getting a record player tomorrow. Years later, I finally get a record player. It's about time. It's about time. But I had to get the good speakers first. Anyways. I'm going <laughs> to... Listening... Doing this stream tonight is definitely going to give me some ideas of what I should play on the record player starting tomorrow. I'll, keep, I'll tell you that for sure. Um, okay. And then um, I play like every freaking song on the Lost Themes uh, albums. One, two, and three on this show. But yeah, this is like one side of... You know, th these are, these are just record sides right here. 
this is one side, this is one side, this is one side, and then I flip a, you know, I get one more track. So we get three record sides and a full CD, and that's a two-hour show. It's a pretty, <laughs> pretty awesome start to a radio show, I would say. So what else did we get here? The tracks of Vortex, Obsidian, Fallen, Domain. And then from The Thing, which is basically like a John Carpenter. I mean, the thing is, Alan Howarth would set up the tech, and then John Carpenter would go in and do those scores for like Escape from New York or The Fog or whatever. And that's that was the thing with The Thing, because it sounds so different for any Morricone soundtrack. So he's doing the John Carpenter thing, so Alan set the tech up for him. And that's why... You, you've never heard an any more Coney soundtrack sound like this before. So you got Eternity, Contamination, Bestiality, <laughs> and main theme and credits. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. And yeah, some of the finest movie music in this show you can think of. So I was really happy with this show, and it was very popular. And people really liked it. People were really responding to it. You see the comments are going in here. So, um, yeah. That that I had done, that I did before going to TIFF. And then I made a show uh, before I went to TIFF. This one, Traditionally Twisted. Proof that classical music can reflect the haunting elements of life. So, I guess I... That's not a great write up, but um, you know, here we are. Um, so here I am with the Howard Shore again because I think I need all this Canadian content with Ed Wood soundtrack, which is not amazing stuff isolated from the movie. Ugh, so many tracks. I really overcompensated with the CanCon, it was funny. Some people made fun of me for that. And now, okay, so I mentioned Christopher Yacht, I did the Hellraiser. Uh, soundtrack I must have uh, no this is all one side these are just quick tracks the theme resurrection how about hearts the lament configuration this is what it's all about um, mystic and severe this is like essence mystic and severe so mystic and severe also the name is an Ennio Morricone song if you're wondering and it is to be sort of suggestive and bold um it's like provocative without being too loud, and it's it's sort of it's something to look out for, um, and it, it encapsulates all the things I love. So like I I like Ed Wood, I like I like the movie fine, but like this 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 stuff right here is not like these tracks aren't great right here. But the Hellraiser soundtrack right, that's that's Mystic and Severe. My world premiere is pure Mystic and Severe. Okay, then what we got here? We got the Clock Warren soundtrack. And this is like the original seventies, like like pressing of it. And this is all one side. Quick tracks, quick quick tracks. And then I have one side of Berlin Alexander Platz. So I'm going for sort of like an old world vibe, I guess, for this one. And it, it was it's a still a really good show. It's just not quite as good as the first one. And I did this at TIFF. While uh, this aired while I was at TIFF in 2018, I was actually at a very cool party, and I don't I I, I li uh, the night this this played, so it's sort of interesting to keep a note of that. September sixth, 2018, and I got so much content from TIFF 2018. Oh my god. Okay, so. The, the first two episodes just music, and now we start getting in, into some interviews. Okay. Listen to the very first interview on Mystic and Severe. Federico Jussin is a prolific Spanish film composer who worked on everything from the Oscar winning film The Secrets in Their Eyes to working with Willie Scott, doing additional music for Exodus Gods and Kings. You can hear his latest composition in Life Itself, which played at TIFF and has its wider release on Friday. After the interview, we slip into the ether of the night with the score to a film called Birdland by Peter Lynch. And that, it'll 
and then I think that's what I meant to say. After no, no, sorry. After that, it'll all be about the world of David Lynch with the sounds from Twin Peaks: The Return, Lost Highway, and Blue Velvet. Ooh. Well, that's pretty cool. So yeah, I'm going for the CanCon again. From and Birdland is a movie that I'm not really into. We interviewed the director and we put that on Movie Mondays. However. Although I wasn't really into the movie, I love the soundtrack. It was really cool. I think I still have this on my phone. I should check it out. And you should check it out, too. They had a release party for the soundtrack in Toronto. I think that's great. And then, of course, we got the... Um, I was really, at this time, very obsessed with Twin Peaks Still Return. Still in 2018. And it came out in 2017. But, uh, man, that show just rocked my world. So we got Chromatics. They were also in the movie Drive. So their their music. We had Au Revoir Simone. Blunted Beats. Eh, that's not maybe a great pick for for this show, but whatever. Um, that's like a rap song that kind of stands out in the set. Snake Eyes I absolutely love. It's got like this a, a great sax solo that I love. She's Gone Away. That's a lot of fun that I played that. Nine Inch Nails. A uh, very heavy song, of course. And then, um, uh, Oxel Aldo. I didn't butcher that as badly as I, thought, as I thought it would. And that's a fun rock song. And then, of course, we get the, the fun Lost Highway stuff. And Blue Velvet. Ooh. Yeah, this is the record. These are records. What's interesting is I read a book on David Lynch and Lost Highway was put together. Like, the funding for that movie was because of this Interscope soundtrack. So Jimmy Iovine's company. Um, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. So you get s some some weird instrumental stuff. Uh, you know, this song. And then something wicked comes this way. I love that song. And then we get to Put a Spell on You by Marilyn Manson. Some more weird stuff by Angelo Badalaminti. Instrumental things. And then Rammstein. That's funny. Marilyn Manson and Rammstein. And Nine Inch Nails made it to Mystic and Severe. It's pretty funny. Well, I played the freaking Mortal Kombat sound this this week, but th those are... Uh, I was going to also, when I was going to make be more about music, I was going to do... Uh, I was going to edit some things and have, like, stupid music, like, stupid... like Or, or music I would just consider a little dilute, a little uh, too mass uh, appeal for something that also has, like, Angelo Battle of BT and Andy Moore and Cody, like, like, you know, dominating... Um, uh, most of the content. Uh, eh, but I would have these ideas to play like Wild Wild West or like You Got a Friend in Me. And I could, it always sounded like fun, but I was just like, ah, maybe not another one. And I, I, I never really played stuff like that. But I, I didn't get to some, some stuff like that. And then, of course, the Blue Velvet soundtrack is very, very, very intense. So, yeah, this is, this is more of a return to form, I would say. To the first episode. Still, like, they're all distinct. And the second episode, this isn't, this isn't suck or anything. But, you know. No. Alright, it's taking forever. So, oif! That's a bong, bong resonance. <laughs> so, oif is Ottawa International Animation Festival. And, and then here, so yeah, it went down and Mike reviewed a Montreal based Ottawa born animator named. David uh, Barlow Carolina. After the interview, it's on. Rizza is a formidable film composer and is the focus of the episode. Ghost Dog and the Man with the Iron Fist are the focus, but I haven't forgotten about the Afro Samurai stuff. Perhaps there'll be a second Rizza edition one day. Well done on this show. So you get Ghost Dog, one of my favorite, like, you know, rap guy albums. So I play a lot of Ghost Dog. And it's cool that I got the Force Whitaker, you know, samurai code quote stuff. And because he's reading from this book, The Hagakuri, which I actually am looking at right now. I, I, I read that book. I own it. And it's just like Bushido philosophy. You know, Ronin. It's, it's basically like a, uh, someone who left the samurai code is, or, or like the samurai order or whatever. And it's like an assassin. It's pretty intense. It's very intense. Actually. Anyways. Um, 
I mean, this is all great stuff. You got, I'm so glad that these artists made it, like Sons of Man and Masakilla. Uh, Royal of Fame is cool. And then, did I get the, uh, oh, no, tell me, I, yeah, Cool G Rap, okay, yeah, I'm really glad Cool G Rap made it to Biscuit and Severe, and I, I could have done more Rap Guy stuff, but, you know, yeah, no, I can't really justify leaving that out, well, I mean, RZA is really, like, the best example of it, so, this broadcast, I think, is good enough for, for there, there just isn't that much rap score stuff. It's kind of hard to do. Like, you know, traditional orchestral music is the is the way to go, really. Or it, instrumental stuff. It's just like break beats. It's like to to s replace orchestral is you know difficult. Difficult. This is really the only one to really like take a stab at it. And then I play these cool songs, Otoora and Ishii. Uh, what is it? Doo doo, doo doo. Hey yo, I want to dedicate this song to Ora and Ishii, half American, half Japanese. <laughs> and oh, what a species! And then um, Ode to Django is a great song. I love the the production on that. And then the Psychic, you know, I just play the show up. All right, so there's that. October should be, so this is shocked over done properly. The elegant and menacing music of Fabio Frizzi in two interviews. October should be a time to reflect on all of the great horror films. It is the genre with perhaps the most evocative of all soundtracks, coming straight out of Rome, coming straight out of Compton. Uh, Rome, Italy is the music of Fabio Frizzi, focusing on two of his soundtracks for Lucio Fulci, Cat in the Brain and The Beyond. Peppi Avila del Pino is an accomplished cinematographer who I interviewed, during Tiff, and who worked on my all-time favorite show, uh, with my all-time favorite showrunner, David Simon. It is entirely appropriate to, then to play two of the, uh, two of five of the theme songs of The Wire. You'll also hear from U of T professor in Italian studies, um, Alberto Zemendetti, and we talked about Tiff stuff. And he's a good guy. Just put that interview up on YouTube. I don't know why I haven't done that yet. Hmm. And so we get the, the wire scene stuff, and then we get Cat in the Brain, and uh, the Beyond. All these sounds great. And they, ca they came with the... The Blu-rays for The Beyond and Cat in the Brain from Grindhouse releasing, which I'm not sure are still in stock. I know you still see lose. That's fantastic stuff, though. Good show. Good show. Good shot over. <laughs> okay, the ultimate spooky Halloween edition, classic and new John Carpenter sounds. John Carpenter is triple threat. Writer, director, and composer. Hear new and old songs by the master on what uh, will be the best Halloween night ever. You just have to hear from Jamie Lee Curtis <gasps> for the Murray Carpet of Halloween at TIFF as well. So that clips on YouTube. Me talking to Jamie Lee Curtis. And, you know, of course I could search a whole show around like a, a one minute clip for two hours. Why not? These, so th th these are cool right here. These four tracks are on 45 records. So they, they sound better. Uh, they're like singles, you know. Yeah, they're crispy. And then we get... Um, oh yeah, I played the full Halloween soundtrack. It's the 2018 theme. Um, and the Halloween Kills soundtrack is on YouTube, or was on YouTube. I posted that on Facebook. I like that. I like it. They're not... Yes, okay. They These scores are not as good as, you know, the 80s stuff. That's all I'll say. But, you know, it's still cool. I was the only show... I was certainly the only show in Ottawa to play that entire CD. Or, or uh, uh, vinyl, I should say. And then we get to little Christine. Which was kind of boring. It's, it's, a, it's a little too low-key. But it really starts off well, and then we get some Lost Theme stuff. Okay, cool. Alright. Alright. 
Oh, so this is kind of cool. Farewell, Stelfio. Stelfio Cipriani is a name that may not jump out at you in terms of recognition in a way like Don Williams does. He did, however, um, make or score many fine Italian films, and in honor of his life and passing away recently, this edition of Mystic and Severe will pay homage to his creative output. Starting with a cool red record with the slick sounds of 1971's Death Walks on High Heels. Moving to Sleaze Your Noises heard in 1982's Pieces and then 1980's Nightmare City. Then finally going full circle to the 70s again in 1971's A Bay of Blood. Mm, fun. Fun stuff. And what was kind of neat is um, the CKC would, had turned another year at midnight when this broadcast came out. So what is it? This is Happy Birthday to Radio Carlson. This music reminds me of Waking Up to Color Bars and this music. In the other... <laughs> okay. It's the last music for 1970s degenerates. <laughs> so, yeah, the Death Walks on High Heels record is cool. It's from Arrow Video, actually. Arrow Records, I should say. And I bought it in Montreal at Fantasia in 2018. It was fun. So, all this stuff is very cool. And then Pieces is awesome. The Carlo Maria Corjo stuff is probably better, though, on that CD, for whoever cares. And then Nightmare City is a pretty good CD. I, I enjoyed sort of discovering or, you know, gaining an appreciation for that through doing this broadcast. And then you get a little bit of blood. And, you know, RIP to a real one. Goblin Megamix. So I, uh, during a, or right before a Claudio Simonetti Daemonia concerts, because it's not the original members of Goblin, just Claudio Simonetti, I interviewed him. And so, yeah, I did two shows sort of, you know, focusing on Goblin music and his stuff specifically. So anyways, Goblin Megamix Part 1, the 1970s Claudio Simonetti interview included. Claudio Simonetti's uh, Goblin has come and left Ottawa already. However, our emotions are still raw from the conditions of the show. However, you will certainly enjoy hearing the music again. <laughs> At least I can give you that. As well as Claudio Simonetti in his own words. The discussion covers a lot of ground. However, this set will only focus on Goblin's work in the 1970s. Stay tuned for Goblin Mega Mix Part 2 in the 1980s. So, I am my little shitty rust blade. Vinyls that I bought at the concert. Yeah, I mean, they get, yeah, they're not great. They don't sound like the real stuff, but the mu I mean, obviously the tracks are great. So that's a side of Deep Red, a side uh, of Dawn of the Dead, uh, two sides of Dawn of the Dead. I went in. And then, yeah, I have some CDs that I took stuff from. Suspiria. Uh, Blue Omega. Is actually not Claudio Simonetti. It's every member of Goblin except for Claudio Simonetti. And <laughs> the Heroin Busters main title. Good way to end the show. Oh, it's fun to revisit this stuff. Uh, and then we went from Claudio Simonetti in the 80s. Goblin Mega Mix Part 2. The 1980s. Claudio Simonetti and Goblin Split. <gasps> some members reunited. But the 1980s, some members going their own way. Goblin me Goblin's members uh, vary depending on the soundtrack, but Dario Argento remains loyal to Claudio Simonetti during this period. The music is different, yet still wonderful. So, now I got my, my Demon's Rust Blade album that I'm showing off. Did I just do one side of it? Oh my god, I did. Um, wow, great restraints. And then these other songs are from, like, okay, The Church, Patrick. Okay, so it's like Demons is like the great Claudio Simonetti album for the 80s. And then this is like, you know, Goblin Members without Claudio doing their thing. Except, uh, well, our, okay, no, wait. Patrick was, was them without, without Claudio. And so was Contamination. I don't know about The Church. Oh, no, no, no. So, with the church, 
and opera. Claudia was definitely involved. I don't know about other members. Uh, Conquest is is a stupid movie, and it was a, not a great theme song. I love this one. Nuke is over. Cut of Rome was fun. Body Count is fun. Oh yeah. And then but Baby Don't Answer uh, is um, the lamest. And Running on the Beach isn't great. Uh, the Tenebra stuff I love. And then... Uh, okay, so I did I did get the other side of the demons. Uh, final. The Rust Blade. And then we get a little Phenomena. Wow. Great music, great scenes, great times. And then, happy Boxing Day. This mix is dedicated for the weirdos. <laughs> Who have an especially hard time over the holidays. The Saturday from Taxi Driver, Death Wish 2, Maniac, and Last House on the Left are here for you. <laughs> Don't miss Life Changer. Okay, so we got an interview with Justin McConnell, director of Life Changer. <laughs> the movie's Canadian and appropriately freaky for this mix. Dedicated to outcast loners and just plain dangerous people. <laughs> well, we all know that Taxi Driver soundtrack's no joke. The Death Wish 2 soundtrack's not very good. I picked it up at a record show day. Uh, and then I go back and forth between Maniac and Last House on the Left, which doesn't really work sonically. Um, but the Maniac stuff is way better, that's for sure. Well, you know my opinion. And that's that. Oh no. I don't even want to talk about this. It was like I would play two tracks. No, I would play a song from 2018 and then I would play something to accompany it. And I would go back and forth. As you see, it goes on for a long time. It was an ambitious thing, but I was a freaking idiot. And every song was played on YouTube, so there were a lot of ads. And it was just like easily my poorest broadcast. Dude, the music is really quiet, but your voices are blasting. So, yeah, uh, my co-host was there, and we um, I screwed this one up big time. Oh, painful. Painful. But I came back in for full effects for one of my greatest broadcasts. We get my latest voice to Italy, featuring Italian film experts Kat Ellinger and Troy Howarth in separate interviews. And Italian genre music sprinkled in between. Cat Ellinger chats about Sergio Martino Giallo films, and Troy Howarth tells us about Lucio Fulci's sexuality. The music will put you in a trance, but the music, the interviews will make you stay awake. All right. Oh, well, this is good. You start with the Eddie Morcone stuff. I remember this. Oh. I love the Seven Bloodstained Orchids thing by Resort Salani. I I um, hum that to myself all the time. And then, <laughs> Zombie 4. Fun times. Fun times. And then here's my little Fulci set. This is one of my best episodes for sure. Because Troy Howarth and Cat Ellinger, well, you know, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. Uh, okay. And then this is nuts. This is a nutty show. So, four sentences from the 70s and three TIFF interviews from 2018. Get funky with me again. <laughs> Let's celebrate Chinese New Year and Black History Month together by lacing three interviews. Jane Yu Moon, Justin Kelly, and Louis Ortega up against f great funky soundtracks from the 70s. Yeah, so the idea was play an interview and then play a side of a record. Which, this is like sort of laying the groundwork for... Um, what Missing and Severe would become, which is mostly interviews. Uh, now I play like one track and then an interview, or, and like reviews before that too. But here it's like one side of a record, then an interview. And it's pretty awesome. It's pretty great. And, you know, these are good vinyls. You got End of the Dragon, Coffee, uh, Soupback, and Chats. Ooh. This is top tier. This is me, like, <laughs> making a point again. Because I'm so, you know, 
I get so competitive with myself. Um, wow. Crazy broadcast. And I had the guys who were going to do the fill-in show, because I was going to L.A., um, they sat in on this broadcast, and I really wanted to show them that I could do a great broadcast, so I worked really hard on this one. Oh, I just dropped bombs. Because in 2019 and 2021, when I get like a lot of TIFF interviews, I drop them all at once. It's just like, uh, you know, it's like a, it's a tornado. It's crazy. But it was also interesting what I did in 2018, which is sprinkle them throughout, you know, months. I held back on doing something like that. That was nuts. That was cool, too. And I was doing two shows. It's such a, it's so, I don't know how, how I did any of this stuff, any of these things. Uh, okay, so you have the School of Bass Takeover show. So I, I can't comment on, on any of these tracks. Because this isn't my genre. It's uh, jungle music. But it's really good. And I do, I do plan on listening to these shows. I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> then when I came back from LA, this is my uh, show. Ed the Sock, Jim Winorski, and Grace Estero. And three oddball legends. And weird tracks. <laughs> Ed the Sock I interviewed over Skype. And then uh, Jim and Greg were in person. Jim was in person in, in LA County. Michael has returned from California. It has some exciting content for you. Not only are there, th there are three interviews, but loads of weird tracks ranging from old, Herschel Gordon Lewis, to recent, Daniel Plasman. You have plenty of stuff to enjoy on this broadcast. <laughs> so I got this this cool CD in LA. Um, the eye popping sounds of Herschel Gordon Lewis, um, which is out of print. You cannot buy this album. But it's, you know. If you know ACL, you know him. I, I can't even explain it. And, and then, okay, so then this is another... This is a record that I got from the Forbidden World soundtrack, which I love. It's a bad album cover, but it's a great record. And, you know... And this is Jim's movie. This is his debut into the Roger Corbin world. And cinema in general. So, yeah, I love that soundtrack. And then, this one's good, too. The Best Friends uh, soundtrack. Daniel Plaza. And then we get <laughs> Petey Wheatstra. Rudy Ray Moore. Classic. And that's that's another album. That's another uh, vinyl that I got in L.A. And it's super rare and in bad condition. But it's just dusty and cool, man. It's dusty and cool. Alright. And, and now I'm really going in with the records I got at Amoeba. Amoeba Records. On Sunset Boulevard. No longer there. It's on Hollywood Boulevard now. Very cool record store. Or just... It's like just a business. They sell everything. They sell movies. They sell records. Da, 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 da. So Amoeba Invasion Volume 1. It interviews with Level 16. Star Katie Douglas. And depraved composer Will Bates. Okay. Los Angeles' hottest record store. Got hit up by Michael O'Keefe. And that's good news for this radio show. Enjoy classic composers John Williams, Bernard Herman, Ennio Morricone, and John Barry. From James Bond to Algerian Liberation, this all vinyl broadcast will touch the hardest hearts. <laughs> You'll also hear from Katie Douglas, star of Level 16, coming sp soon to the Mayfair Theater, and Will Bates, composer of the upcoming film Depraved. And we talked about some other stuff too. Yeah, Will was cool. And so was Katie. She was, she was great. Alright, so you. I love that I own this one. Goldfinger. Ooh. Man, I'm getting ideas of what to play soon. <laughs> we got Goldfinger. We got Battle of the Algiers. This song right here is incredible. Citizen Kane. Okay. Not, not the best soundtrack, but still Brown Herman. It's still, you know, worthwhile. The Dracula soundtrack. Okay, maybe I could have gotten a better one, but... You know, it's still fun. And then more cold finger. Oh, that's a good one. What was in volume two? Okay, 
so we have four more. The soup's going on forever. Uh, Amoeba Invasion Volume 2, along with interviews with Freaks, co-directors Adam B. Steen, Zach Lebowski, and Ralston King, who was running for a city council on the Rito Rothlefairy. <laughs> yeah, I was doing like, political stuff for a little bit. I don't do that anymore. But I was doing uh, some stuff like that. Anyways, Memories of Los Angeles Keep Flooding In. This set sees a return of the music of Fabio Frizi, Francesco Damasi, and John Carpenter. But also the introduction of Willie Hutch. We hear sounds from the apocalyp from an apocalyptic New York to a serial killer in New York, the Italian Mafia, and California Pimps. What connects these records is that they were purchased at Amoeba Records on Sunset Boulevard, which is the finest place to shop in the city of Los Angeles and probably all of the United States of America. <laughs> That's a bull statement. We hear from Adam B. Steen and Zach Lebowski, as well as, uh, as well, who share stories on their film Freaks, from Bruce Dern to working with children, child actors, you'll be interested in this exchange. This podcast even has Ross and Kane, who's working for City Council in the Rito Rockliffe writing. What's his vision for the writing, the CKCO Films Future, and the movie industry? Tune in. All right. Okay. All these cool songs, these cool movies. Escape from New York, Contraband, my favorite movies. All these, right here. The New York Ripper, The Mac. Yeah. Classic, 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 classic. This show's like getting it into its stride, I would say, with, with the balance between music and interviews. After this one, My Lady's Voyage to Italy. Now it's really taking off. We can see that. And then this one is a bit of a stall. It's just like, I didn't need to play. Okay, so it's like the self-titled broadcast. Okay, it's Mystic and Severe. And the song Mystic and Severe is played on a show called Mystic and Severe. You have to call that broadcast Mystic and Severe. This exclusively a vinyl set uh, explores the musical dimension of Sweetie Westerns done only by Ennio Morricone. Okay, great. Uh, I still think... I relied a little too much on the Death Rides a Horse album. Um, it's great that it has the song Missing and Severe on it. No doubt. But, like, there's all these, like, different versions. Yeah, version 2, version 4. Like, of the same songs. The stereo Mix version 3. It's That was, in hindsight, not, not a great idea. And there's no interviews. So it's kind of a come down, but still a cool thing to, to peep. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> Thus spoke Speck Tony Stark. Epic sounds of, super, of superhero movies and interviews with progressive comedian Rob Lacombe and National Gallery of Canada art curator Murray Olinger. <laughs> okay. The Avengers Endgame is out, and even if it wasn't superhero movies dominate the box office today, this broadcast looks at some interesting music that the genre has to offer, from Run the Jewels to Christopher Yen. While the genre is fun, it is quite basic, so, so to keep things interesting, there are two interviews, Ron Balcon and Marie Olinger. And we talk about Jimmy Dore and Nietzsche and all this stuff. So it's kind of like... Yeah, it's, it's a... Oh, okay, I'll finish the right up, so... Ron Balcone is, is an LA-based progressive comedian who appears on many segments on the very popular YouTube channel, The, the Jimmy Dore Show. Uh, he talks about contemporary American politics, and he does other stuff, too. You know, He's, like, writing a movie now, so it's kind of interesting. I didn't know that he had this love for film when I did the interview. Maybe we'll interview him about his movie. But anyways, he talks about contemporary American politics and the important question is asked, how liberal is Hollywood really? Frederick Nietzsche was one of the most important thinkers of the 19th century, and his influence has lasted th to this day. As a stylistic writer, his influence permeates throughout every artistic medium and in regular day-to-day -day life. <laughs> this is <laughs> kind of a cr <laughs> even <laughs> I don't know why I wrote all that. Uh, we will learn about an exhibit looking at the modernist art in the Weimar Republic and the first round of artists inspired by the thinker from National Gallery of Canada art curator Marie Olinger. So I'm sort of definitely editorializing a little bit, the exaggerating a bit too, but um, I still am big into Nietzsche, 
the writings of Frederick Nietzsche. I'm currently reading The World is Will and Representation, Volume 1, by Arthur Schopenhauer, who, you know, Nietzsche has a, a big relationship with intellectually. Um, they're both nihilists, or whatever, German nihilists. Something I'm really into, but anyways, I, I still think, like, I think at this point I was trying to do things that were interesting, and I was deviated a little bit too much, if I'm going to be honest. But some of these songs are fun. Uh, what was the ones? That were? Yeah, Guardians Inferno is fun with David Hasselhoff. The Bad Taste was fun. That's a song I've been aware of for a long time. A lot, a lot of these songs are are bullshit. But <laughs> the uh, the rap music was fun to kick it off. All right. And then I did this fill-in show. Because it was, it was supposed to be every two weeks, so I did it three weeks in a row once. The time slot is in trans transition. Uh, Michael O'Keefe was happy to do a severely mystical takeover during that period. Okay. Theme is loose, but also precise. Parts of four classic soundtracks. Barry London, 1975, was not appreciated in its day, but has found somewhat of a cult audience these days. I'd say it has found a cold audience. The sounds are not really of its time, but that works just fine. Well, that, that sentence doesn't last very well. It hasn't aged very well. Anyways, Blue Velvet was seen as very strange in this day and remains to be seen that way. Its popularity comes from the con controversy any prominent surreal film faces. Um, not just that, but it is. It's hard to take issue with Angelo, Angelo Badalamenti's fantastic music and the weird yet effective use of 1950s rock music. While contemporary North American audiences may need to f be familiarized with Dario Argento's The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, it cannot be overstated how important this film was for the giallo cycle back in the day and the sheer amount of imitation it inspired both in Italy and then later in America for the 1980s slasher cycle. Ennio Morricone, known for his fanny western music, up until this point, delivered a very creepy horror score for director Dario Argento. Speaking of Italian composers, Nina Rota delivered some excellent scores for Federico Fellini and then Francis Ford Coppola for his film The Godfather, which is a film so influential that the only one that is more influential would come uh, uh, would come from one of Francis's friends, and that is, of course, Star Wars. Okay. I like the Berlin of the music. I've read the book. Uh, that's my favorite movie by Stanley Kubrick. So I'm glad I played that. And I was just throwing something together. Here. And here I am playing like the best music ever. Barry Lyndon, Blue Velvet. Um, the Bird with the Crystal Plumage, I think, stole the show. Because of the record. I mean, so... I think the Barry Lyndon is from the 70s. I don't know if it's a reissue. I don't know. I forget. I have to look at these things. But I, I know the Bird with the Crystal Blue Mint wasn't an original, but it was from the 80s. And it just sounded really good. And like the Godfather one's like a new record that I got at Sunrise Records. It's still cool, though. Yeah. Anyways. Uh huh. I'm going to discuss one more show. Brings us to um, May 16, 2019, and then I'm going to stop the stream. It's been going on for a long time. I almost did all of them in one stream. Thankfully, there will be two more streams like this uh, over the, the next... Um, I'll do one maybe on Sunday and then one on Monday, so, you know, it's very time-consuming. Uh, I can't go every day. I'm not going to go tomorrow or the, the day after. It's You're, you're going to get it eventually. Okay. With that out of the way, I will read to you this, and then I will sign off. So, Gritty Pop and Disco, soundtracks by Giorgio Moroder, as well as Ottawa Comic Con coverage and Sari Braithwaite's interview. Giorgio Moroder is a very cool guy, okay? he will <laughs> You will hear his soundtrack work on Midnight Express, American Gigolo, Scarface, and Cat People. His work on these films ranges from funky electronic to pop music from the 1980s. Disco Man. In between the tracks, you will hear from animators Marco Reddy, Arthur uh, Sudam, Anna Campbell, and Dave Ross. All of this audio was recorded on May 10th at the latest Ottawa Comic Con. 
Starting May 17th at the Mayfair Theater, you'll be able to see Censored, a new Australian documentary that's focused on censorship in the film industry. You will hear from the director of this documentary, Sari Braithwaite, and she makes a compelling case to check out her documentary. All right. The Midnight, Sound, Midnight Express soundtrack rocks. I love it. I love it. Uh, and Jay Dilla sampled one of these tracks um, for um, MF Doom, Gazillion Ear. I don't remember which one, though. Of the three, Chase, Low Steam, and Theme from the next was I don't know. I don't know. The American Gigolo soundtrack's okay. A little too poppy. Scarface is a good time. It's like poppy, but it's it sort of works in, in like a coked up sense. And then Cat People I love, of course. That's from my world premiere. And that is an appropriate time to end this stream. Thanks for rocking with me. And you can look forward to two more streams of this nature coming in the, in the next um, my, my cutoff date's like uh, um, the 22nd so yeah peace